Hey team, it's day 27. Hope you guys are doing great. Thanks so much for all your support. It's almost four weeks into this. And for those of you that are following me or maybe even going along with me on this, I hope that I've been providing relevant information and you've enjoyed uh, following along. And, and here's to the next you know, two months that we have. So we're expecting big results and continuing with as much relevant content that I give you. So as always, if you have any questions or any requests, uh, just let me know and I'll answer them in subsequent videos or right there in the comments. So here we go. We're gonna jump into the six goals and then we'll talk about the hormones that impact sleep. So 222 pounds, I'm like 221.8, so pretty stable at that weight. Um, I had a ton of red meat yesterday and I ate a little later, so I'll cover that as well uh, when we talk about hormones and what that does. Uh, 1,930 calories right in my range, 118 ounces of water, six hours of sleep. That one's a little killer for me, but you know, beginning of the week, I do have a big team. I got a lot of planning to do and I wake up early for meetings. So, you know, what do you do? Uh, 45 minutes of activity, still doing my uh, lifting program, which is good. 250 grams of protein. I mean, I had a couple sirloins, I'm not gonna lie, and they were good. They're awesome, I loved it. But I'd also, when I do eat red meat, that is one thing I know about my body. When I do eat red meat, I tend to retain a little bit more um, of whatever, water, I don't know what it is, it's red meat because I can eat the same amount of protein in chicken. I guess maybe it's the fat, I don't know for sure. But anyway, um, that's just how my body works. So as you guys are going through this, that's some things that you can test as well. Like, you know, if eating later makes you, you know, carry more weight into the morning, you know, a ton of different things, drinking more water, uh, eating more fat, eating more carbs, you know, it's, it, this is a time to test your, your body and your body's reaction to food. And that's why I always say, track your calories because you'll know what your macronutrients are in the same. So you can actually like, just like ad testing or anything else you test in your life, you can kind of know where your sweet spot is over time and especially over 90 days and lose a ton of weight while you're at it. So let's get into the hormones that are affected when we sleep. Now, first and foremost is the growth hormone, you know, and that's really released uh, mostly when uh, what they call slow wave sleep or in your beginning stages of sleep. And so you don't wanna mess those up. But growth hormone, you know, really it, it promotes lipolysis. So basically the breakdown of fat. Um, also muscle growth, you know, whatever protein synthesis, whatever else you wanna talk about. But the main thing that I like to say it for and why you wanna get some sleep is you get that extra, you know, lipolysis, that breakdown of fat. Melatonin, you buy it over the counter to, to make sure you help with sleep, but it does exactly what uh, you've heard that it does. It just helps you to get into that sleep. Uh, cortisol. Now, a lot of people say, well, gosh, it's my cortisol. Uh, actually, cortisol by itself isn't bad. It's just uh, what it actually does. It's, it's your fight or flight response. So it's actually supposed to help you um, wake up in the morning. If you oversleep, you might miss it. Uh, you can use your cortisol spike for uh, working out to give you energy. But overall, uh, if you don't get adequate sleep, uh, it, it does mess with your cortisol levels. Or have you ever wondered why you can't fall asleep at night after a real busy day? Because your cortisol is still jacked up. So getting into a good sleeping habit will regulate those cortisol hormones and lead to regulation of leptin, which is the hormone that causes satiety, and ghrelin, which is the hormone that causes hunger. And so when you take a look at this, seven to eight hours is kind of that magic spot of what you're supposed to get for sleep. And the study that I've, or actually a couple of different studies that I looked at, uh, even before I jumped on this, just to make sure I had my information right, it's really a tight window of what the ideal amount of sleep is. Just going an hour and a half plus or minus that, you get negative effects to your body. And, and, it, and a couple of studies talked a lot about just night shift workers and like, circadian rhythm and, and all sorts of stuff on how, you know, sleep deprivation is higher markers for cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes. Uh, a lot of shift workers tend to have a, a larger BMI and, you know, more bouts of metabolic syndrome. Uh, it's, it's just nuts, right? So when you think about this and, and what it all does, uh, you have to remember that this also impacts how you eat food and your cravings for food. And so when you think about getting a good night's sleep, what should you be trying to do? A, get a pattern. 
uh, really get a pattern down, uh, set alarms for both going to sleep and waking up. Uh, you know, if you want seven, seven and a half, eight hours of sleep, get those alarms. My alarm rung yesterday, is rung now. I can tell you right now, based on the time, I'm not gonna get, I mean, I can get right at my seven, but it's, it's something that you gotta get into the habit of doing. Uh, because if you don't, A, your growth hormone's not gonna kick in right away and you're gonna lose a little bit of that lipolysis effect. B, your melatonin doesn't kick in like it should. It actually has a little bit of a, a just a unfazed uh, response. So you actually kind of stay up because your cortisol, your stress, stress hormone is, is still riding high, whether you're doing business or whatever it is you might be thinking about. And then when you look at your leptin, which ceases your hunger, those levels are um, depressed a little bit, but your ghrelin comes up a little bit and then your brain saying, hey, I wanna eat some food. And overall, if you have a decent sleep schedule, uh, the lack of sleep is just gonna to lead to you craving more food and eating more food. So none of these hormones themselves, and that's what I don't like, none of these hormones and the deregulation of these hormones are the cause of you gaining weight. It's what you put in your mouth. It's what happens here. So do these give you benefits for regulation and like to maintain a healthy weight? Absolutely, and the data suggests if you don't have a normal sleep schedule, you have higher risk for all the stuff I've already discussed because these get messed up. But all I wanna tell you is remember that even if you're falling behind and you have a red day of six hours, if you're maintaining those calories and you're not, well, one last thing is don't eat a lot of starchy foods right before you go to bed. Uh, people think that, you know, that makes you gain weight. Well, it gives you a better chance of gaining weight over time because remember insulin would be on the rise then and insulin, when insulin's present, you don't get a ton of the growth hormone to kick in right away. So you could potentially miss the chances of the benefits of that. So we could go through a ton of it, but I just wanted to do really high level on the main hormones that are impacted, do your own research, but all in all the overall message, regardless of what data you look at, regardless of what studies you look at says this. Try to get between seven and eight hours. Um, I mean, some people say six and nine. You do what's right for you, but, but in the end, it's, it's a pretty small window. And the research that I looked at was an hour and a half plus or minus of that can lead to some of the negative effects that I've talked about today. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. And that is the reason that I harp on this seven to eight hours of sleep and I'm going to bed after I get done posting this video. So thank you guys for uh, following me. Thanks for all your support. I definitely appreciate it. It keeps me going every day and I will continue to bring relevant comment or content. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thanks again.